with an amazing friend, Sarah Kalik. Yes. Hi. Yes. <laughs> and she is a quality engineer? Yes. Okay. She's a quality engineer, but she studied as a biomedical engineer at Georgia Tech. Yep, that's right. So she's from the U.S. of A. <laughs> yeah, we're, you know, America. <laughs> America! <laughs> um, yeah, so um, a lot of people, I think, um, there's a lot of crossover in different engineering fields. Mm -hmm. So can you sort of explain what biomedical engineering is? Sure. Uh, so biomedical engineering is kind of an assortment of different engineering field, so, uh, but f a focus on medical device technology. So uh, you, you can have different tracks. Sometimes people focus mostly on mechanical engineering aspects. Um, some people focus mostly on electrical engineering, mm -hmm. um, but you kind of have a, a lot of different breadth, but then you add on to that um, a lot about biology and uh, focus on how medical, what is, what's the importance within medical device technology. Okay. Yeah. So, it's so what are some examples of the medical device technology that you would like a catheter, for example? Sure, yeah. yeah, a catheter is an example. I can kind of tell you about some technology, like just mm -hmm. very high level, um, that is within my company. So we have, it's called um, deep brain stimulation. It, that helps with people with Parkinson's disease, so they have control back over their body. Uh, another one would be pacemakers and defibrillators, or even um, like blood pumps. Okay. So yeah, there's like a huge range of technology. That Those are more like, um, implantable, but there's also non-implantable devices, and there's a there's a huge range that you can work on. So it's it's device. really like the mechanical technology. Mm -hmm. It's not like medicine or pharmaceutical or like anything like sure. that. Sure, no, it's not. So it you know sometimes people in biomedical engineering do tend to go into medicine afterwards because it does give them a better idea of. Um, I guess the engineering side and what they'll be implanting, but most of the time people go into the engineering world where they, yes, it's like manufacturing, designing, and uh, developing uh, medical technology. Okay, so my other question was, so you have this design uh, aspect of the technology within biomedical engineering. Is there another aspect of biomedical engineering that like looks at humans and how they're affected by these technologies, or is that just a completely different field? Sure, no. So we, we do uh, also evaluate how the medical device technology will impact the patient. So <clears throat> on different levels, when you're first starting to develop a concept, you do clinical evaluations, which include, for example, animal studies. It provides a concept mm -hmm. um, as to the difficulties to come, and they can adapt their concept or their technology based off of that. And then you really get into the development side, um, and then you have transferred to manufacturing, and then you manufacture the device, and then you start selling it to patients. Okay. That's kind of the overall scope. Okay, yeah. great. A lot of people have this question all the time, like, how do you know which stream of engineering to go into? How do you know, like, how do I know if engineering is for me? Like, how did you decide first off that engineering was for you, mm -hmm. and then that you wanted to pursue biomedical engineering over any other engineering? Sure. Uh, so honestly, I did not know that I wanted to pursue engineering um, at first. Uh, kind of what happened was I was in a physics class when I was in high school, and I really struggled with my physics class, but I was able to overcome it. I really figured out, um, like, I just really understood physics by the end of the course because I worked hard at it. Mm -hmm. And um, my teacher took note of that, but I, it was, um, my friend was, my friend was kind of, one of my friends was struggling in the class, and my teacher recommended for her to talk to me. And yeah. I, I kind of, that, I was like, oh, wow, maybe I can do this, and maybe I can um, get into, like, that, that world, I guess. And, um, and then my, my dad was also an engineer, so there was a lot of, like, encouragement there. Um, and so from that point, I decided to do engineering, uh, but, you know, I had no idea when I was applying to colleges. I applied to different colleges with a large scope, and I applied to different majors. Mm -hmm. um, I, and it wasn't until I had to decide where I wanted to go that I committed to engineering. And how did I know I wanted to do biomedical engineering? Um, you know, I did want to be a doctor when I was a kid. Okay. Um, and... That quickly faded out in high school, but there's still that interest there, like um, understanding how I can contribute in some way um, positively. Yeah. Um, and it didn't have to be in healthcare. It didn't have to be. It just had to be something that I knew my work was like adding value to a community. 
Um, and so that's that's why I decided to choose biomedical engineering. It, it was to me that that concept of healthcare was something that would be moving forward. Um, there's al there's always a need for it, and then also I knew that I'd be benefiting people in some way. Yeah, so that's kind of how it Yeah, I feel like a lot of engineering. It's like you benefit society, like bridges, um, you know, improving energy efficiency. But in biomedical engineering, I feel like it's so much more. You're really impacting an individual directly. Definitely, it's right? kind of cool. Like uh, we have on my company sometimes people that patients that visit with their technology and they talk about how like happy they are that Aww. they have this much it's it's just really cool like hearing that and you when you hear that you're reminded of why you do it yeah and that, that's kind of like that was what it is for me yeah yeah that's great yeah it's, it's really cool i like it a lot when i come in and talk and you did um four years a bachelor yeah that's right and then you got a job in california yeah, I did do some internships. I worked at a like startup incubator. Okay. Um, I also worked in a undergraduate research lab dedicated to um, ther uh, cancer therapeutic drugs. Okay. Um, and I also worked in a. It was also a laboratory, but it was part of the healthcare industry focusing on um, cardiac devices. Okay. So those are the three kind of uh, internships or. I guess you can call some, like the research was more a part of my education. Well, it wasn't necessary, but it was something that I chose to do. And it added, it helped me decide if I wanted to go to PhD, which I didn't. So, okay. <laughs> so I figured that out, but it was a really cool experience. I'm very glad I had it. Okay, that's yeah. good. So you yeah. did both of your, your internship and your research were both in the same field in biomedical engineering. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Uh, they were kind of a, a broad range of topics. Like one was like design intern, where I focused okay. on like SOLIDWORKS and CAD. And then another one was more about like the engineering side and the other one was just like really research and development. Mm -hmm. So yeah. two internships and uh, research. Yeah, that's right. And then now you work in California. Yes, that's right. As a biomedical or as, as a quality engineer? As a quality engineer, okay. that's right. After college, I applied to a program. It's called, um, it's a rotational engineering program. Basically what that allows you to do, it's a full-time program that allows you to try different positions um, in a course of three years. So my first year was actually in uh, Dallas, Texas, and I was an operations quality engineer, which is on the manufacturing side. Mm -hmm. And then my second year was in Los Angeles, and I was a development quality engineer. So I worked on developing the technology alongside R&D. And then my last year, uh, which is now, mm -hmm. um, I am a quality systems engineer. And what that really focuses on is how regulations translate what we do day to day. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking about doing a master's or a PhD or do you want to stay in industry or do you want to get that and then go into industry? Sure, so I do want to stay in industry but I would like to get my higher education at the same time. Uh, so I have thought about getting my master's while I continue to work. Um, honestly, like the reason I want to continue to work is that I've learned a lot about application. Mm -hmm. um, I think in school uh, they offer so much knowledge but it's difficult to maintain that if you don't know how to apply it. Yeah. Uh, and so that's why I want to continue working. I've learned a lot in the past three years um, but I do desire getting my master's just because I do I value education a lot and I find that um, as I'm getting older I see a lot of people getting their master's or their PhD and that's not the reason, but it is an encouragement. Like, okay, how do I stay competitive in my field? Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why. And then also, like, I want to explore another aspect of engineering that, um, like, I want to hone in, a, like, a, a particular skill set. Mm -hmm. so and I'm are you thinking mm -hmm. biomedical masters? Um, right now, you know, I'm thinking mechanical engineering just because of my I, f I found like while I was working I just have a particular interest in mechanical engineering um, but I do want to stay in medical device technology okay so I could go into biotechnology um, but I think I just want to explore the mechanical engineering side of things a little bit more and then we'll see how that goes yeah, yeah. that's great that you 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 know you can get a master's and get like it's not you don't have to put yourself in this biomedical engineering box. You can start yeah. a mechanical engineering degree or even electrical engineering degree yeah. and then work in the biomedical field. Yeah, definitely. You can do that. Um, I mean, the medical device industry is 
open to a lot of different things because it, it it works just like aerospace I mean like the aerospace industry or other mechanical engineering industry electrical I mean, it works the same exact way the knowledge is still there the the one thing about medical device technology is that there are additional regulations associated with it mm -hmm. in order to protect the patients yeah that's kind of the difference mm -hmm. what are like the different yeah types of jobs that you could get sure uh so there's a like a wide range uh so you can work as a quality engineer like me which there's, you know, different aspects of that, whether it's in manufacturing, design, or systems. There's also um, just specifically manufacturing engineering, um, which is really cool. You're either sustaining a device, uh, uh, like a device line, mm -hmm. or you're developing a new a process to develop to manufacturing the device, mm -hmm. or you can work as an R&D engineer where you are physically developing that concept and bringing that to reality. Uh, there's systems engineering where you see it's kind of different than quality systems engineering. So systems engineering is like seeing how the design and will impact in the in the indus, in, in the patient itself. Oh, okay. So a larger a larger perspective. And then there's also clinical engineering, which you can do like we talked about earlier, like the clinical mm -hmm. testing. So and that's only a few. There's a lot more than that. You run a women in STEM Facebook group. I do. <laughs> and I'll let you sure. introduce it. It's like the group was about creating a community um, for people to support one another. Um, honestly, there's a lot of aspects to our industry, uh, whether it's standing for your, up for yourself in the workplace or um, learning how to draw your boundaries or understanding like when you're making decisions don't that um, don't align with your particular values. There's there's a large range of things that we deal with day to day um, as a woman that isn't really talked about and that's what my goal is within the group is to get it to a place where we are there for each other and um, and we want to help one, one another grow um, so that's really what my group is about and honestly it's also for me like I I'm also learning a lot too I want to figure out some things and um, why not do it all together and see one another develop Sarah <laughs> Thank yeah. you so much for being my first U.S. interviewee. No problem. <laughs> I'm so glad I got to do this and I'm glad I got to be in Zurich too. If you guys really like this video, then please give Sarah a thumbs up below. <laughs> if you have any more questions for her, leave them in the comments yeah. below and I will personally get them from her. Yeah, that sounds and good. Also, you're subscribed, so you will be able to see. I am subscribed. Perfect. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and if you want to see more from Women in STEM, or if you want to know more about how other people have um, journeyed into their profession, then please subscribe, and yeah, we'll be sure to help you out. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> All right, take care.